All right, hello. Welcome Hi, to everybody. the Planet Comics Facebook page. We are your new hosts. I'm Tyler. This I am Katie. Katie. Hello. And today we're going to be here doing a little bit of comic, comic talk. Wow. Woo! It's all new, all different. Much like Marvel in 2015, new faces, it's a new day. We got new books, new story arcs, a whole lot of stuff to talk about. We're going to be doing things a little bit differently, a little bit of a different format. Before we get started, first of all, I'd like to shout out to Jay. Love Jay. Great guy. We're all going to miss him. This show wouldn't even be a thing without him. Love you, Jay. Hope I don't run your show into the ground. Love you, Jay. Thank <laughs> you. He's a familiar face, and we hope to get to know you guys as well as Jay knows all y'all. So, Absolutely. He did such a wonderful job that it's so much work, you had to be split with two new people. That's how much of a load he was carrying. Now then, for the format, we're going to start with DC Comics Bulls. Going to go on to Marvel, and then Katie will go on to the indie books. So I think we're just going to go ahead and get started. All right, so... You know, comic book. Hey, how much do you know about comics, Katie? I know, like, enough about indie <laughs> stuff. DC and Marvel, I Superheroes, don't know much about. Not, yeah. You've seen the movies? Uh, yeah, I've seen the movies. Okay. So you know that everyone always says, like, oh, well, comic books is nothing but giant events. That's all it ever is. Mm -hmm. Technically true. DC has a way of doing events where there is, there's all kinds of different comic events for all the different heroes and stuff like that. But the biggest events are known as crisis events. And there are have been eight total. And those are the ones that are multiverse spanning. The entire comic dimension is out there. Every single hero from every single Earth, they're all included. Heroes die. Heroes get created. It's all good stuff. There have been eight so far. And now last year, DC Comics started up the Infinite Frontier, which was a new jumping on point for, like, for readers. And they started that with, the event was called Infinite Frontier. They also had a book called Infinite Frontier. So the Infinite Frontier 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That book ended with, to be continued in this book right here justice league incarnate now the justice league incarnate are basically a multiversal justice league so you see here right here we have on the cover here president superman calvin ellis from earth 23 he is from he is first of all his name calvin ellis cal l oh <laughs> okay i get it yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he used his powers as superman to become the president and just protect everybody. And so he is the founder of Justice Incarnate, the team in the book. And this following up from Infinite Frontier, they're going after Darkseid, who is the biggest bad in all of comics. Ooh. This is probably the single most important book in DC right now in terms of just everything. This will affect everyone. This is issue number three of five, and it's building up for another crisis, I guarantee it. It's without a doubt building up for another crisis. And drop in the comments if you want to add this to your pools or whatever. We'll be watching yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. If you want to add this to your pools or if you'd like to buy anything you see on the show here today, all I have to do is, yeah, drop a comment. Let us know what you like. And so we have there these bases covered. And here is the variant featuring Dr. Multiverse. She is a brand new hero from Earth 8. And Earth 8 in DC is the Marvel Earth. It is their version of the Marvel Earth. So they have like a blue hulk they had fa the first issue of infinite front of just league incarnate they had their version of thanos and dark side killed him off yeah this is like hard sock <laughs> variant too so yeah it's absolutely nice. very nice art and then the third variant we have for that would be this one right here doesn't have anything to do with the actual story itself but I think it's a promotional item it for is the a peacemaker well the peacemaker show that's yeah. right starring john cena oh that's so sick <laughs> yeah <laughs> Have you ever seen, have you seen the Suicide Squad movie? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So his character was phenomenal. <laughs> Cannot wait for that show. I don't know where that's going, but speaking of Earth 8, I said Dr. Multiverse from Earth 8, the next issue of Suicide Squad right here, the Suicide Squad versus, number 11 versus Earth 8's Mightiest Heroes. They are literally taking on DC's version of the Avengers. Oh, okay. Because the Avengers are Earth's Mightiest Heroes and that is what they're doing. Very cool. Yeah, or the Suicide Squad run is phenomenal right now. They have uh, they have a match who is a clone of Superboy who is a clone of Superman. They have a clone of a clone on the team, and he is basically like Superboy's bizarro Superman. They've had two Superboys fighting each other in the book. Okay. Like, that is how crazy that book is getting. They've recently introduced onto the team right here in this cardstock variant, we have Ambush Bug who is basically a Deadpool-type character. It's very random. He, he's well aware that he's in a comic book, 
He breaks the fourth wall all the time, and everyone's just like, I don't know what this guy's talking about. <laughs> like, why do we have to deal with him? But his teleportation powers are vital, and that is why, like, they have him on the team. It's all building up to a big crossover event that we will get to in the future, but very cool stuff. Now, this book, coming up next, I know is one for DC. I'm mostly a DC guy, but you wanted to talk about this one. Yeah, yeah, Soul Plumber. This is issue, I think it's number four right now. This is, so the guys who, if you're familiar with last podcast on the left, it's like a true crime occult podcast. This is the comic book that they have been partnering with DC to make. I unfortunately was never able to get an issue one of it um, because it was kind of hard to pick up, but it's super zany, super quirky, and super gross, very gory. Um, I'm super excited to start reading this, Um, and this uh, cover is really cool too, so... The last podcast guys are hilarious, so I know it's probably like comedy horror. Um, here is like the variant cardstock cover to it, which, you know, I don't know who that is, but I also kind of love it. So definitely check out Soul Plumber if you're interested in that kind of stuff. And moving on from that, next up in DC, we have the World of Krypton. Good old fashioned Kryptonian lore book featuring all of Superman's ancestors. I don't know if it's going to have any ramifications for the future of DC or anything like that, because, you know, Krypton... Uh, spoiler, it blew up. Krypton, gone. That not exist. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> yeah, wow. But you didn't know that one. That is that is number two of six, and we have this special variant right here for that. World of Krypton. Oh, very nice. Shiny I love boy. the artwork on that. I yeah. actually need to get into that because the character designs are very good. That's something that I haven't typically uh, gotten into before, but like I, I've never super been interested in the world of Krypton because, like I said, it blew up. But... The more I hear about that book, the more I want to, like, I think I'm going to add it to my list and start reading it. Mm-hmm. But while we're on the subject of Superman, the book I absolutely am reading, we're both reading it right now, one of the few superhero books you're reading mm-hmm. as well, Superman, Son of Kal-El, number six, special cardstock variant right there, a great action shot of our new young Superman, John Kent. Could be one of my favorite covers, like, of this week, just because he looks so cool. It's a very cool shot of him. I'm hoping that that book it seems it's on a good start and tom taylor the writer of that book is one of my favorite writers in dc right now i think everything he's done is great i think some of the decisions they've made with john while controversial are also really interesting there's a lot of new places you can go with that that you wouldn't typically go with superman and while superman is in the middle of his action comics arc where he is off world anyways that's a good book to follow you know, what's happening with everyone else on Earth, you know, what's happening with John and with Lois. And I know it was also controversial, too, they aged up John. Mm-hmm. But I think that as much as I didn't agree with the choice, Tom Taylor is made, like, with his writing for that book, is making me, like, start to like the choice even. That's how, like, good it is. Up next, we have One Star Squadron. Now, I originally bought that because the previous issue, issue number one, had uh, a variant cover that I thought was beautiful. It was Red Tornado there, who we see on the front right there, staring out, like, now he's looking into a window, and it's like a rainy night, and it's super bright neon colors. It was really cool, and which is funny enough, because so far it has not matched the tone of the book, because the book itself is more comedy-based. It's called the One Star Squadron, because Red Tornado and some of the, like, like C and, like, D-lister DC heroes have basically, like, a DoorDash type like app basically where it's just like, oh man, my cat's stuck in a tree. Let me swipe left on Red Tornado and he'll just, you know, shoot some tornadoes into a tree and blast them out of there. And the supporting characters are the Bennett Man, who is literally, he has superpowers for one minute. And that's it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. And that, there's some really good stuff in there. Surprisingly enough, I can't wait to see where that book goes. Mm-hmm. I am really looking forward to it. I, I've heard. At the end of that previous issue, they talked about Maxwell Lord, and mm-hmm. that's a big character for DC. If you watched Wonder Woman uh, 1984 or 1982, he was the villain in that. Mm-hmm. Maxwell Lord is a key character, and I'm really looking forward to seeing where they go. That's awesome, yeah. Up next, if you're a fan of the DC animated universe, we have Justice League Infinity, which takes place in the Bruce Tim DC animated continuity. Now, that I have not myself gotten to. I've seen, the cool thing about that, They have brought other characters into, like, that universe that weren't there either because they didn't exist when that show aired or they weren't there because the writers just didn't have a plan for them at the time. So, like, I know uh, Red Hood was in the Batman one. 
and that one has Blue Beetle in it. And these are all characters that weren't featured. Booster Gold was featured, but, you know, Blue Beetle wasn't. And those two are like a key tag team as well. A lot of good stuff in there. I think they've, they're have they doing a dark side plot right now. I like the art a lot. It's really cool. Yeah, I think that's a var- that would be a variant cover. I think we're all out of stock on the, uh, the standard one. Speaking of variants, though, Joker Puzzle Box. The digital-only story... Everyone loves the Joker. He is the Joker, baby. <laughs> Don't you love the Joker? Who's your favorite Joker? Who's my favorite Joker? Yeah. Jack Nicholson. That's a good choice. Yeah. <laughs> He's you, the one that scared me as a kid. <laughs> if, you, if you said Jared Leto, I was going to walk off the show. <laughs> that's fine. I was that's just going to leave. Yeah, like, that's it. Like, welcome to the new show. Show's over. I mean, at least a number two for me. You know, my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> nah, 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 nah. nah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Joker puzzle box. Cardstock uh, variant here. Very nice, though. And we were just talking about with Son of Kal-El, Tom Taylor, one of my favorite writers. He has been given his own alternate universe, Elseworld storyline with Dark Knights of Steel. And now, I think this is a story you would really like. Okay. Because you're big into fantasy, right? Yeah, like, very much so. This is an Earth in which all the DC heroes are put into a fantasy setting. And so they're all like knights, but they still have their powers and stuff like that. And the first issue uh, ends with the big reveal that Superman and Batman on this Earth are actually brothers. Oh, that's really cool. So okay. a lot of cool different takes on that. Yeah, I like uh, I like this cover art a lot too, but I have had my eye on this series for a while because it does look so like high fantasy. Yeah. Yeah, it looks pretty sick. I love that like everything about it is so cool. And even cooler, Superman's my guy. The variant for this, very cool shot of Superman with the knight and he's in the shining armor and he has the flag with the It's like house literally of L on like it. a Renaissance esque painting too. Like it's so beautiful. So definitely try to pick this one up yeah. if you can. Now up next is a character I don't know I don't know if you know anything about have you ever heard of Lobo before? N- literally no. Lobo mm-hmm. is nineties incarnate. He is one of the like most edgy outrageous characters that DC's ever created. They created him in the 90s, which is where he belongs. And I don't even remember if it was ironically or not. Yeah. <laughs> but he was so ridiculous that everyone loves him. And since then, he's in, they've introduced his daughter, Crush, which is where we come to this series, Crush and Lobo. The final issue of that series, issue number eight, of eight, uh, Lobo is such a horrible person that that arc has begun with Crush has never really known her father. She knows who Lobo is, but she just knows that he's the worst. Okay. And the, he Lobo is such a bad person. He is a Zarnian, and he's the last Zarnian because he killed all of his other people. He just wiped them out. And so we got Crush, and he got in contact with her in the first issue and said, Hey, let me, uh, I, I'm in prison. I'm in space jail. I turned over a new leaf, though. Like, you know, I'm a changed man. Come on down here. I really just want to talk with you. And it was all just a trick to for her to take his place in jail and so he could break out and she's been on the hunt for him ever since that's amazing and we have these nice cardstock variant featuring just crush herself really cool character i mean i'm kind of rooting for crush honestly yeah basically jenner swap lobo but i mean she's awesome just like lobo she's just as cool up next we've already covered all the superman books now we're on to dc's bread and butter their golden boy right now it's batman Batman Never heard number, of them. Yeah, who's that? Batman number 119, new run by Joshua Williamson. This is only the second issue in his run. The previous run was uh, James Tineen IV, who most people know from his uh, from their horror comics. And now we're on to Joshua Williamson, who is also the writer for Justice League Incarnate. Okay. Which, as I said, Justice League Incarnate, definitely building to a huge event in the DC Universe right now. I would, like, I would wager that any book written by him is one to follow. Just like with Tom Taylor, I think all those stories are going to be good. Not only is Joshua Williamson a, a very good writer, but I would follow, if you care about what the state of the universe, any book with him that as the writer, you need to take a look at. It. And the story of that is following the previous arc of Fear State from the previous writer, uh, Batman is, he's just going through Gotham. They've saved Gotham from another, you know, horrific tragedy caused by a Scarecrow. And Batman sees a blimp with a news headline that reads that Batman Incorporated, which is a team that Batman put together for every other country in the world, so every country would have a Batman, Batman Incorporated, uh, they're wanted for murder. And so Batman is out to solve the mystery and figure out, you know, did they do it? If they did, why did they do it? And the last issue ended that uh, with Batman no longer being a billionaire. He's a millionaire, so he can still fund his own <laughs> stuff. Poor guy. Yeah, <laughs> tragedy. <laughs> 
he can still fund his own stuff, but he can't fund all these teams anymore. So he couldn't form Batman Inc. So who picked up the pieces when he lost all that? Lex Luthor. Oh, okay. So Lex <laughs> is actually not in the Superman books. He's in the Batman books. That's pretty sick. Okay. And, and while Batman is in those other countries, you know, figuring out what's going on with Batman Inc., we move on to Detective Comics with new writer there for Detective Comics, brand new run, perfect jumping on point for anyone that wants to get into Batman Detective Comics right now. This is the start of the weekly Shadows of the Bat storyline, which means we're going to be talking about this book every single week for the next 12 weeks. That's how big it is. And because Batman is in other countries, it's up to these guys, the Bat family, my favorite part of the Batman mythos. They have to pick up the pieces now. And we have, uh, with Arkham Asylum, which is destroyed, the new arc, they're building Arkham Tower, which is if you played the Arkham games. Mm -hmm. It's kind of got that vibe to it. That's where it seems like it's going. And there are all kinds of interesting new characters who's coming from that. They're bringing in Nightwing. They got Huntress. They got Cassandra Kane, my girl, Stephanie Brown, Batgirls. Love those Batgirls. Finally, they're all getting something to do. Very cool. And coming off of both Batman and Detective Comics, we have these nice, very nice variants. Yeah, these are the uh, the ratio covers, and this one in particular, I think it's yeah twenty four ninety nine for this yeah. one. It's very very nice, very pretty. Really like that one a lot, and that's for the Detective Comics. That one's for Detective Comics, and this one so good is for Batman. Definitely got an animated series vibe to it. Like not all of these guys. Like you know, I see Deathstroke down there. He wasn't in the original animated series. He was in the Teen Titans one. Okay. But he wasn't in the Batman one, but. All of these guys, like Two Face, uh, you know, Joker, Freeze, they definitely have their animated series designs, and that's what makes that cover so cool. Mm -hmm. Like, those are some of the best designs. Also, uh, twenty four ninety nine on this guy Absolutely. too. Absolutely, so good. I forgot all about this special way. We're going full circle back to Justice League Incarnate. Right here, we have this special variant featuring Dino Cop, one of the members of Justice League Incarnate. And Dino Cop is a reference to the Image Comics here of the Savage Dragon. You ever heard of him? No. Uh -uh. That is a very, I mean, Savage Dragon, I don't think anyone's really talked about him since the 90s, unless you're a fan of Invincible, which is a whole other can of worms. So not really pe many people know him, but that's a very deep cut reference. This, that book is full of them. Which and this is one cool. is forty dollars, so it's thirty nine ninety nine for this one in particular. But it's kind of a one and only right here, so definitely let us know if you want this one. And the final book for DC is Arkham City. We were just talking about the mm -hmm. games, Arkham City: The Order of the World. Now this one is like a crazy horror esque story featuring a lot of deep cut Batman villains that no one thinks about. You ever heard of the Ten Eyed Man? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> he is a key component in this. Goofy Silver Age villain that has now been turned into like this just horrifying monstrosity of a man. I love that. Very, very cool cover for this one, too. Let us know if you'd like it. Drop it in the comments. Absolutely. Now we're on some Marvel, right? Yes, that is the end of the DC drops for this week. So we're starting up with, for Marvel, Wastelanders, Doom, number one, the one and only. What do you know about the story Old Man Logan? Have you ever heard of that? Uh, I've heard of it. I don't know too much about it. Did you see the movie uh, Logan? Logan, yeah, yes. I did see the movie. That movie, loosely based on the Old Man Logan story. Basically, the Old Man Logan story is an alternate Earth in which uh, every hero from Marvel bands together, wipes out every, basically every single, uh, every villain bands together, wipes out all the Marvel heroes, and turns it into a lawless wasteland where they divide up the uh, country, Earth, all the countries for areas in which each villain controls. And Old Man Logan is yeah he's one of the only survivors of the team or of all the heroes and this is going back to that earth because we've been done with the old man logan stuff for a while mm -hmm. but this is going back to that earth and this is part of like a event and we've had three or four different uh like stories based on this so far so this is wastelanders doom there's only one left next week or in a couple weeks, we'll have Wastelanders Black Widow. Cool. We've had Wastelanders uh, Hawkeye, Wastelanders Star-Lord, all kinds of different characters that we haven't seen in this like Old Man Logan Earth yet. And this is also based on, they have a podcast, a radio show drama type, that's basically these stories just being told you know, with voice actors. I know, I think like Danny Glover's a part of it. Oh, that's like, really they've cool. They've got a lot of big names for it. Nice. And to go along with that, we have the black and white variant cover of it oh that's really cool i like this one a lot yeah black and white comics are you know so good it's kind of like uh 
kind of like The Walking Dead. Oh, yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Black and white's a very hard thing to do. But with something like that, I think it works out very well. Yeah, it has a whole uh, different aesthetic to it for sure. Up next, coming from that, we have the X-Men. Everyone loves the X-Men. Now, I have not been following this current team of X-Men. This run has only been going for six issues, and I think this might be a good jumping on point for people that want to get back into current X-Men. And if you look here at the tab, we are featuring a brand new character. That's the advertising point for this is Captain Krakoa. And Krakoa is the island, a mystical island in which the X-Men are living on currently in the run. And he's a brand new hero that Cyclops doesn't seem to like. Cyclops <laughs> doesn't want him in the X-Men. And you're going to have to read the book to find out What's going on with that guy? What, who is this masked man? There's a whole world of masked men, but we care about who this masked man <laughs> this is. This one in particular. Cyclops don't like this masked man. What's up? <laughs> we have a couple different covers for this one, we too, do. right? We have a special variant featuring Polaris, which is a... If there's a million X-Men characters, and I don't know all of them, but if you flip that one over, mm -hmm. let them see that. They have a nice profile for oh, Polaris. That's cool. All of her different powers and her bio. Everything great. And then another classic X-Men variant, the good old team shot. Very it's got cool. All of them. What do you think about that Jean Grey costume? That's, that's a, yeah, that's that, awesome. That's a well. That you think it's awesome? I think it's cool. That's a hot take. Is it a hot everyone, take? Everyone, not hot take. She's had that costume since about the Silver Age. Oh, okay. And, and everyone is think like she's tired of it. They don't it, oh. want Jean Grey in that suit anymore. Yeah, they want a you yeah. want a costume. Yeah, time, well they've changed it before, but now they changed it back. Okay. Moving away from superheroes for a bit, we have Star Wars Doctor Aphra. Dr. Aphra debuted in the, when Marvel first uh, started up the Star Wars comics, they had a Darth Vader comic, and she was one of the, like, brand new characters that worked for Darth Vader in that. She was kind of like an evil Indiana Jones type, is how, like, her creators described her. She's an archaeologist, but also has absolutely no morals, and she mm -hmm. doesn't care who she screws over in order to get what she wants. It, that series ended with her trying to betray Vader. That didn't work out. Vader wanted her dead, but she's way too popular to kill at this point. And mark my words, she's going to be the next big breakout character from, like, comics to, like, into break into, like, a Star Wars show. Yeah. Or a movie or, you know, anything like that. Mm -hmm. I definitely think she's going to be. This is the, probably an important series. To, absolutely. Uh, I think, well, like, not only an important series, it's a fun series. Yeah. Like, that one is, there's not a lot of serious stuff in it. It's more just, like, wacky misadventures with her. And she's just such a joy to read. Definitely yeah. one of my favorite characters. For that, we have the variant featuring it, art from The Last Jedi. Did you see The Last Jedi? I actually didn't see The Last Jedi. That was a... that I think The Last Jedi is phenomenal. Yeah. That's my hot I take. know, that's a hot take, that, I think yeah. that is... I think Last Jedi... Although, I do think this cover is funny because that features probably the two single most hated characters from The Last Jedi. Yeah, and... I, that could be a selling point in some cases. <laughs> I think so, too. It's very funny. It's almost tone deaf. Mm -hmm. But... <laughs> You know, but it could be yours. <laughs> <laughs> What's next? Moving on to that, back into superheroes. Did you watch uh, Shang Chi? I haven't seen it you yet. I haven't seen no. it. Well, here we are. Shang Chi got a hot new series. Only seven issues in. Definitely trying to like get some of that you know movie popularity. Get some fans reading the comics again. And that movie is phenomenal. Yeah. And Shang Chi is a character who I didn't think was going to be nearly as cool. As he, as he was. is, yeah, yeah, because seeing that movie, the martial arts are spectacular, and I'm a guy who loves like some good kung fu movies. I do too. And there is some excellent fight scenes in that, and these comics just feature even more of that, more martial arts. And this one is going to go into the backstory of Shang Chi's parents, who in the movie have a different origin story, but in this, it's a different continuity. You see a new take on it and kind of figure out what's different about it. Mm -hmm. We have another cover for that one too. We do. It is the 30th anniversary of Deadpool, so several of the Marvel characters have little Deadpool covers, which just feature, you know, cool little Deadpool pose, because we all love Deadpool. And we're I like all... how Deadpool just kind of, like, inserts himself, you know? Basically. <laughs> Deadpool's a character, you can put him anywhere, and mm -hmm. it will make sense. Yes. Because that's just how he does. It's pretty on brand for Yeah, him. like, when I saw that, I was like, are we just putting Deadpool in covers for no reason? And then I saw the 30th anniversary logo. I'm like, oh, okay. But kind of, yes. <laughs> kind of, yes, but we have a reason for it, at least. Yeah. <laughs> and this next one, two of Marvel's now A-listers, Captain America and Iron Man. Classic team-up. Me being a DC fan, the best way that I could describe it is that this is going to be their world's finest. 
where World's Finest is the team of Batman and Superman. Mm -hmm. So this is the team of Captain America and Iron Man. Just, like, if you want stories that's just them working together, then absolutely, like, this is the book for you. It's... This cover it kind of is, is very dramatic, so I would is. assume that something's going on. You know, maybe they don't get along as well as uh, as other teams and superheroes do. I think we need more team-up books in here in superhero comics, though. Yeah. Not events. Proper, just like, give me a tag team, you know, of a re two random kids that have been thrown together. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't, like, people you wouldn't even expect. Mm -hmm. I think that's what we need more of. Moving on that, we have another variant for this, for Captain America and Iron Man. We have the nice... Villains Rising variant. Is that, I believe that's it. Is it Villains Rising or Villains Villains, villains Rain? Rain. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, I, I, I like that one a lot. The shield design on that is phenomenal. Yeah, <laughs> very cool. And when I was looking into the Marvel books, I think I'm adding this next one up to my list 100%. First of all, I think it has the coolest cover, maybe of the night, Black Widow. All of the books, all the covers for this run for Black Widow have been phenomenal. They are so good. And I, I even like the type design on the on yeah. the cover too. That's really interesting. I it, everything about it is cool. And like did you see the Black Widow movie? Yes, I did see the Black Widow movie. The Black Widow movie. I thought it was great. I really did. And I don't know too much about Black Widow admittingly, but Agree or disagree. But it... <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was good. <laughs> Obviously I need to read some of these. <laughs> Well, what you would get some enjoyment out of this is that you saw the movie, mm -hmm. uh, you saw uh, Yelena Belova, that is, in the movie, it is her sister. In yeah. the comics, it's not her sister, but she's kind of a partner in crime sort of thing. That is, uh, she's going by the White Widow. Oh, that's cool. And this Antithesis. run, this run is the second uh, issue in a new arc. They mm -hmm. just ended the previous arc from the previous Black Widow run, uh, and Black Widow has a husband and a child now. And it's too dangerous for them, you know, to be around her anymore. Mm -hmm. So she had to get the help from Winter Soldier to take them elsewhere where she doesn't even know where they are. Mm -hmm. She cannot be with them because it would just be too dangerous for them. And now she has moved to San Francisco with Yelena and a whole other team of, like, women that they've amassed. They're doing, like, all their spy shenanigans, you know, pretending San Francisco. And they got word of a secret organization that is, like, threatening the underbelly of San Francisco. So they got to get in there and figure out what's going on. The end of the last issue ended with a new character that no one else has seen featuring it. Oh, he has a brand new vein as well. Cool costume. Super great. I told you all the Black Widow. Yeah, these are awesome. All the Black Widow covers are so good. Is that, a, is that a Peach Momoko one? Right here. Let me see. Yeah, I believe so. Look at that. Very yeah, cool. Yeah. Cool that one pose. might be my favorite one. I think, well, this next one also is a great one. For absolutely no reason, Black Widow with a Spider-Man costume. Okay. Wow. Interesting. Kind of reminds me of Silk. Do you know anything about Silk? I don't. Uh -uh. We will get into Silk when she when her next issue comes out. Oh, That'll we got. One. I see you. And Our boy's there back. he is. Deadpool. <laughs> Once again, Black Widow <laughs> and Deadpool. Very cool. And I think this last uh, Marvel book is going to be. It's the big one to talk about. Uh, the latest issue of Thor. Now, already, if you had Thor in your pull box at the store, at the planet, then you already get Thor in like in that standard price. But if you didn't, and we only have this one copy left, it has already gone up to $20. Because that at the end of that issue, a very important, potentially a very important thing just happened. Like a big event or yeah, some sort? Yeah, okay. like a big thing for the lore mm -hmm. right now. And so already the price is shooting up. That book is crazy. These Thor covers, too, I've been seeing them come out weekly. They are, like, gorgeous. Like, I'm not sure who the artist is, but I'm definitely going to look more into them because they are, like, stunning covers. And like I said, that is just the standard cover for Thor. And yeah. It's, already, it's the only copy I love. It is 20 bucks. And then this one, which is a huge $200, but it's phenomenal. Yeah, Look that one's it. very, the very nice. The variant cover on that is outstanding. And like I said, these those books are only going to keep going up just yeah. because of like what happens at the end of the day. I don't even want to spoil it because Marvel Comics aren't available till tomorrow, technically. But if you liked any of those books that we showed off, Marvel or DC, once again, feel free to put a comment. We will put those aside for you. Absolutely. It is a first-come, first-served basis. 
And now I think you have some books yes. that you want to talk about. All right, up with our indie titles. So I'm going to start with uh, the robot-heavy books this week, because apparently that's just the theme. Robots are cool. Yeah, robots you are know, really cool. Everyone likes robots. This series in particular, Not All Robots. I'll pass that to you. Yeah, all right. This is the last issue in this particular series here. It's issue five. This is incredible. I sat down last night and read uh, one through four. And it's basically, it's a society where humans, like every human household has like a robot who does everything for them, works for them. Sounds like, like the Jetsons. Yeah, kind of, <laughs> actually very much yeah. so. Yeah, well the robots, uh, they're starting to kind of realize like, hey, maybe this is not like the way to live. Like <laughs> they've got their little empathy chips yeah. in and everything. Rosie's had enough. Yeah, yeah. Rosie has literally had enough. So in this series, uh, yeah, they're about to start a riot start from what riot. I know. So, and the conclusion to that will be in this. So definitely check this out. I really like anything. I will doing check with, it out. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. No, anything to deal with robots kind of makes me sad. I so. mean, you know, who doesn't love a good robot uprising? Yeah. You know, we deserve it. And honestly, you really think about it. to kind of keep with the theme here. Now you're talking my language. Yeah. Blade yes. Runner 2029. This cover is gorgeous. This has been a really fun series so far. Uh, if you're familiar with the Blade Runner property, the franchise, I mean, I think this is one that Philip K. Dick himself would really enjoy reading. Uh, it's very immersive, very cool. It's another bounty hunter type situation. So I definitely would check this out. This is issue 11 out this week. And so that's Blade Runner 2029, mm -hmm. not 2049. So it's a little bit before the movie. Yes, you yeah. You can put Blade Runner on anything and I'm going to, like, I will read it because so, it is, the aesthetic is perfect. What did you think about Jared Leto? <laughs> he was good in it. Yes. I don't want to credit I'm him. I'm sorry. You have to admit that yeah, on air. <laughs> look, I, I give him credit when he deserves it. Also out this week, this is Vasculus. This is chapter six, so issue six. I don't know much about this series, um, but I really think it's one where the artwork is very, very pretty on the inside, and the covers are killing it too. So this one looks like a lot of fun. So definitely check out uh, issue six this week. Boom Studios, very good. I like Boom a lot. Yeah. We also have a different cover for Basilisk as well. So this is very cool. Oh, this one's a little bit more ominous. So definitely give that a... It's got the blood and gore. Seems yeah. like it's another fantasy type book. Yeah, very much yeah. so. So we also got oh boy. De Deja Thoris. Is that Deja Thoris? I believe so. Yeah. But the more important part but... I want to talk about is versus John, John Carter, Carter of Mars. Yeah, this is a really fun series that I've been uh, seeing come through the store. I don't know yeah. much about it. I haven't read it. Quick, yeah, it's been it, going it really quick. Long. No, but this cover is exciting to say the least. So definitely check out De uh, Deja yeah. Thoris issue six. I don't see what you could look at that cover and not like. It. Yeah, right. You know, it's got a little something for everybody. <laughs> look I mean, We've got Evil Ernie up next. Which, what a great cover. This is the coolest that. thing. Oh my gosh, this Nirvana tribute Absolutely. cover. Like, it's so <laughs> That's sick. So, good. so, issue two, I really want to pick up issue one and start reading it. Um, this is just like the most metal thing I could ever, like, potentially see in my life so i think <laughs> i think this is definitely a good one to pick up so issue two you can jump in and not be far behind so and then kind of on brand we have elvira meets vincent vincent price so this is issue four out this Horror week icons yeah I so love both of them. i mean absolutely have you ever seen any elvira stuff i have seen some yeah, elvira stuff oh yeah she's great. she's a queen and a half for sure like it's she like, is amazing she's very entertaining like and her the books read just like like she would be saying it too totally you can like hear her voice in so it. this next one we are all really excited about this is uh the first in a new series called The Fourth, is it Man? Yeah, yes. The Fourth Man. So, first of all, I mean, like, the danger noodle right there with the... With is the, that what you call it? The danger noodle? I, I think it's, uh, they're called something, but I'm calling him the danger noodle. I think the internet will call them wacky, waving, inflatable, arm flowing tooth men. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, that's I believe that cool. will be the uh, proper term for that. Thank you. This is going to be so good, though. It's actually based on a legit true crime story of some sort. The tagline makes it seem like a sweet movie poster. Like, read that tagline out for us. Oh, yeah, let's see. Three murders, 25 grand, or, or best, best offer. offer. That's so good. So, very cool. Definitely, if you like crime stories, apparently it's pretty funny as well. So, kind of like dark humor. Um, I haven't picked it up yet, but I am definitely going to be reading this this week. So, let us know if you're interested in that for sure. Next, we've got Hell Cup. So... Yeah. We've got Hell Cop right here. This is issue, let's see, issue three of Hell Cop. Looking pretty Flip cool. to the first page of that. Okay. Uh, well, uh, Mary, one of the other employees in here, we were looking at that. Yeah, the very first page, we just like that art. Show, show that bit. <laughs> she just opened up and was like, look, 
it's a flying pig. It's a flying and it's pig. Like, well, I'm slow on the book now. <laughs> I pretty much covers it. Yeah, you kind of like, got to get it for the flying pig. It's got a sweet name, and it's got a flying pig in it. This cover for Hellcop, though, I think I prefer more than the the previous one. This kinda, one's yeah. very, very cool. It's just interesting. Like, I don't know. There's a lot to look at. Like, a lot to look at. That's and I'm just like, like art that you have to, like, stare at for a good bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pick out different faces every time. So this is, yeah, Hellcop issue three. Definitely pick that up. So here is Horizon, Horizon Zero Dawn issue 4. I wasn't uh, aware that they actually had a series running for the video game Horizon Zero Dawn. Did you play the game? Yeah, I did play the, the game. The game is like one of the best games. It was one of the best like storytelling like yeah. game experiences that I've experienced in a long time. Like that's definitely I need to pick up that book because that was kind of like the Blade Runner. You just show me like robot dinosaurs. I'm like, well, this is awesome. Yeah. I gotta check this out. Very, very interesting storyline. The world building is incredible in this property. So definitely check out the comic here. You're not too far behind with issue four being out this week. So check that out. Up oh, next, boy. we got a couple of covers to show you. We got uh, Jennifer Blood looks like issue four yeah, here. Yeah, Jennifer Blood. Yeah, here this, she is. I'm loving oh, this cover. Boy. We're gonna get through them though. Yeah. We got that one. We got. This one Rapid right here, fire, cover C like for Jim. Yeah, got, you know? she she dangerous. Cover C here is very cool. I kind of like this cover D one right here. She's looking. I like that in every cover she looks like a different person. She, like she you can know, be whatever you want. Man. She can be whatever you want. I love it. Yes, <laughs> big selling point. Yeah. Cover B right here. She's throwing a grenade at you. Got to watch out. Whoa, that one might whoa. be my favorite just because like uh, that one or the next one. I like the like the art style of that one. Yeah, the art style is cool. It's a really dynamic cover as I think well. With covers, I prefer like the I prefer a drawn cover like less than the photorealistic mm -hmm. or like just straight up photos. The cosplay ones. Yeah. yeah. This is cover A for Jennifer Blood. So that one, yes, yeah, so that's like the previous one or this one. This, this one's one, very a, cool. That is like a perfect action shot. It's a fun angle too. Yeah. It's a really interesting perspective like, as she well. She just dropped like a dope one liner and she just totally did. destroyed somebody. <laughs> Definitely. This next one here, this is uh, Harriet Finnegan. So, the, uh, Ma how do you say your name? Majory? Majory. Marjorie. Ma Marjorie. There Marjorie. we go. Thank you. Marjorie. Marjorie English, hard. <laughs> English very hard. Marjorie Finnegan. This is actually the last issue of this run, though. So, definitely check this Written out. By legendary comic writer Garth Ennis. That's the key thing that sticks out to me with that. Oh, really? The author. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It looks like a really fun series. Looks kind of campy almost. So yeah. I'm very interested. Maybe like, I'll pick it up and kind of read through it. sometimes for the wrong reasons, Garth Ennis. <laughs> <laughs> now this is, I believe this is a Buffy cover we have here. So this one is Buffy. This is... I don't know what's going on in these Buffy books now. No, dude, they look like Power Rangers, honestly. nine ninety nine for this Buffy cover, though. It very, seems very like cool. With, when it comes to comics, if you're a Buffy fan, you've been eating good for like the past 20 years. Literally. <laughs> like, yeah. they haven't stopped. Mm -mm. And they're just going to keep going. They're... Well, they haven't stopped, and I've heard that it just is not like getting worse. Like, it's getting yeah, better. Yeah, it just is getting better. This next one, Bylines and Blood. Uh, this is an aftershock. This is a number one. Issue number one. Yeah, so this is definitely probably a good just why not pick it up and try this one out. It looks cool. I haven't looked into it too much uh, aside from just looking at it right now. But um, I really like it. It looks really cool. I think it's uh, going to be a fun one just to pick up and try. Any number one is always worth the shot. Because why, like, why not? You mm -hmm. know? Aftershock does really good stuff too. And so. you might find like the next Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. This uh, variant cover here for it. Now that's a good cover. Yeah, it gets me kind of excited for the whole aesthetic of the story. So I think this is going to be a really good series. Fourteen ninety nine for this guy though. So maybe buy the other one, give it a read, and then pick up this uh, once you decide. How or much just you go like all it. in. Just decide. This is my new favorite thing. Straight. I'm buying this yep. right now. I like the confidence. Yeah. Now Magic: The Gathering. We've got issue number ten in the series right now. I really like the magic covers. I mean, it's fantasy yeah. it's magic yeah. so you know what do you know about the about the magic lore do you know anything about magic lore? <laughs> i know i play the game so i know the planeswalkers yeah. and yeah. all that the I lore i couldn't tell you anything mm -hmm. about no. magic the gathering no i could not tell you one bit yeah. of the lore but this can tell you about the lore so <laughs> should probably check it out i will say this uh variant cover for it though is very cool yeah check that out black and white he is angry you know, i ask you right now is that well what, what would you call that that creature there oh gosh i should probably is that know. a minotaur that's or a is minotaur. that a centaur that's a minotaur is it i think it's a minotaur you think so yeah i think it's a minotaur. that's yeah i'm just messing with you it's a that's what you fight in the yeah. labyrinth yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. twenty dollars for the minotaur confirmed yeah. <laughs> 
So that cover for Magic. This one, uh, Anita Hawk's Nightmare blog. Whoa. This looks so cool. So this is actually issue number... Three. Yeah, thank you. Issue number three. This is one that I've been walking past on the shelves and been meaning to pick up the first issue because it looks really, really cool. So if you've been reading it, this is issue number three. If you haven't been reading it, pick it up. I probably will. Yeah. I really like uh, this cover art, though, and I'm very That's interested. That's giving me, like, Jordan Peele vibes. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah totally. Looks really cool. Now, this next series, Noctera, this is also, I think this is issue, oh lord, where does she go? I think Not, it's one or two. I am going to agree. You know what? Yeah. This is a, is this a one shot? Anyways, here we go. Noctera, I know it's a, a, ish, or a series that's running right now. Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a one shot. So it's the Blacktop Bill special. Um, very cool cover art. I have not really read into Noctera. Yeah, I would flip that over though because it got a sweet tagline on the back. Oh yeah, he was a hitman, a, a murderer, murderer who, who killed, killed men, men, women, and children. Oh, he doesn't stop. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't know much about Noctera, but this is a pretty sweet cover. Cover so. C by Tony Daniel, mm. great artist. So yeah. this next one is a new series called Panther. Yeah. I recognize it from like the preview. It's been like on the preview covers uh, a couple months ago. I've been calling her Panther all day. You have been calling her <laughs> Panther all day, all but day. you know, yeah. I, I you know I see it. But yeah, we've got uh, that was cover D I just showed you. We got a cover C right here. It looks like ancient Egyptian like kind of prophetic magic yeah. kind of stuff. It looks like a really cool series. Um, so this is probably one like uh that aftershock one that I'll just pick up and try out uh because I really kind of enjoy the, uh, the covers and the whole vibe to it so this one is actually really cool this is the one that was on the preview so this is cover a right here I really am interested to see what this book holds so Pantha definitely pick it up now next before you even pick this one up <sighs> I think this is the cover of the night this is the cover I think it's of the night I think it's staff pick okay I think it's the best one okay here we go you guys I think ready? it tells you a lot of the story so we it got the cover needs to so we got the incentive cover right here for what even is it book it doesn't matter it doesn't it does matter. Not matter but i can tell you red sonia fans this is probably the one that you want to pick up right here so this is cover in case L. you guys didn't notice her face is in that cover yeah you got a good personality but yeah. red sonia cover is always kind of killing it this one is yeah. definitely letting you know what you're getting into so <laughs> definitely pick that one up uh more red sonia covers that are a little bit more readable you know this one is cover c mm. for red sonia yeah. coming out this week <laughs> <laughs> Another Red Sonia cover here. We got cover D. So this one is very, very cool. I like this cover a lot. So Red Sonia fans, definitely make sure you pick your favorites. Have you ever or... seen the movie for Red Sonia? No, I haven't actually. I. No. <laughs> movie night. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, we got a weekly spawn release here. So we got monthly. the huh? Monthly spawn. Is it monthly it's spawn not... release? Oh, it's not, it's not a manga. Oh, yeah, you I'm know. <laughs> Oh America. well, here we are. <laughs> we got Spawn this week though. Uh, so 325 this Everyone's month. Everyone's favorite, Todd McFarlane. I just love, I mean, Spawn is a character that has been carried by his concept for like 20 plus years mm -hmm. of just like, he's cool. Well, they got all those spinoff series like Gunslinger and yeah. King and everything. So. And so this is like standard Spawn. Mm -hmm. This is back to Spawn, back to, well not back to basics, but it's just more Continuing. Of the, yeah traditional spawn yeah less like he's not a cowboy in this one he's not a cowboy in this. <laughs> this is a really cool cover though spawns a series that i've always wanted to get into but have been just too horrifyingly intimidated to get into it um because uh 325 i don't know if i have the time in my life to get to it but if you're a spawn fan please tell me about it because i think this is really really cool we'll find your starting point for spawn i please anybody tell me <laughs> what is the starting point i want if to you read have it. a good starting point for spawn let us know please in the let me know because Absolutely. i really want to read the cool cowboy spawn comic so, right here, Star Trek Star fans. Trek now? What do I know about? This I turn it on when I go to sleep at night. Um, Whoa. It's very comfortable. Whoa. That, yeah, no, it's made, cool. No, you made that like an insult. No. Well, I, you just now changed that. If you knew me, that was like praise. But, no. you know. <laughs> Issue three, Star Trek Star Mirror Trek Star War. Huh? Oh, Star Trek. Star Trek over Star Wars? Yeah, Star Trek over Star Wars. No, you're just saying that now because you just insulted it. No, no, Star Trek over Star Wars. <laughs> I have never seen the original trilogy. What? Sorry, I'm I'm confessing I'm a lot walking, tonight, but definitely check out. Yes. No more show. Next show, I won't be here because of that. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I really am sorry. <laughs> but here we go. We got two covers for Star Trek Mirror War. Check it out. Very cool. There we go. Had a lot of Star Trek fans come into the, the store and like ask for Star Trek books. So like those are the ones. Yeah. Absolutely. For sure. This is a new series called Monkey Meets. On name alone, 
it, that that's that's that pick right there. Maybe yeah. Meat. No, the artwork is really really cool. It's got this like super like I don't even know what to call it. I don't have the words to it's describe. It's almost like an early Cartoon Network like two thousand yes. vibe. Yes. Totally. Yeah. Uh, the concept to it, I was kind of reading into it a little bit. It's like there's some sort of island where they like produce this like really questionable monkey meats and i it's it's crazy yeah i'm sold is so, that issue number one yeah this is issue number one yeah sold. so definitely that one over that one's got some on the back too. yeah this is pretty cool check monkey that out meat safari don't yeah. feed the wildlife <laughs> it got change that is phenomenal. yeah so pretty sick but that's all that we have for you those were this week's uh that's, indie picks that's everything that we have now mm -hmm. before we go pick out of that stack of what what was your staff Pick. what's your personal favorite pick? oh definitely show? let me see let me see Where'd go ahead go? and get mine you already know what mine is go uh, d uh the go red sonia one yeah you better believe it you <laughs> is already it know you already this know this one definitely my favorite <laughs> Legit, color that one actually i think that story is going to be the best mm -hmm. it's like, gonna be very cool yeah cover alone literally everyone here saw it uh this uh come in today and we we're just like we gotta read it so yeah i think this yeah, is the one that wins i think so for sure runner up red sonia that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> Can I have that? Can I have Oh, yeah, yeah. You want one more one more look at it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there we go. It. Uh, not that one. That's not the one. This there, you not the one. Hey, there you go. There you go. But yes, yeah, no. This is the one you liked, right? Yeah, that's not that. Right. Not. <laughs> Fred Sonia, bye today. But thank you, everyone, for tuning thank in. You so Obviously, much, guys. be patient with us in the coming weeks as we figure this all out. I personally think we killed it. I, I feel pretty good about it. I hope good? you guys, yeah. You don't think we ran everyone off? Uh, hopefully not. I think no, uh, nine count, people dropped to zero. Yeah, probably. If you absolutely hated this and hate me and her personally, let us know all your uh, personal deep dark thoughts in the comments below. Yes, do that or don't because anxiety that will give it to me. So, you everyone, thank you for watching. Be patient with us as we figure this out. But we will see you next week. So absolutely, same thank time, you. same place next Tuesday give at us, six o'clock. Yep, give us a message for any of these that you are interested in. I see some comments have come through, so we're gonna start digging through those and responding. So thanks everyone for tuning in. Bye bye. We'll see y'all.